This video is part two of the 100 year old banjo mandolin uh, restoration. Uh, it covers uh, sanding down the, uh, the pot in the neck and uh, preparing it for paint. Uh, part three in the next video will uh, cover uh, colouring the, the pot in the neck and creating a faux or false grain. So uh, keep a look out for that. I'll bring out videos every Saturday. So make sure you've uh, subscribed so that you, you get to see those. Enjoy the video. Next we're going to sand this puppy down. Don't forget your protection, air protection and breathing protection. Now, oh, no, I better put that on. Okay. So much for breathing protection. I'm just trying these new 3M sanding discs for the first time. Apparently they're supposed to be brilliant. We've got 120s here. And uh, we'll see together what they're like. I was buying a lot of the, um, the Chinese sanding discs on AliExpress, the uh, Chinese company where you can get a lot of stuff really cheap. And a lot of this stuff's good, but their sanding discs weren't. So... Um, We'll just see how these go. Bear with me. I'll, I'll turn the volume down uh, on the sanding, but uh, I'll just run it over there. My little lava. <laughs> Let me tell you right now, that is very good. Far better than the other sanding discs uh, I've been using. And uh, already, I'm really happy and really impressed. What I might do though is just go straight to 240, see how they look. Okay, let's go. Let me tell you, they are brilliant, absolutely brilliant. That would have taken me about oh, five to ten minutes to do it before. Uh, these are called Cubitron by 3M. And uh, I did that last week with uh, 240, start off with 120. But I want, uh, still pretty well as good as new, feels like. All the dust is going out. This is new. In fact, I'll use the one to to do the neck with the um, Chinese sanding discs, discs I've been getting. To sand this down, I would probably use 20. And so far, I've used not even one. So let's let's have a go at the neck. sanding them down you don't have to take everything off uh, I'm going darker than this I'll do this walnut so uh, that's that's good enough uh, all we've got to do is so uh, we've got this area here that uh, had the binding in it uh, what I'll do I'll go over that with, with some sanding seal I'll get go over the whole lot with sanding seal in fact sealer I use 
is an Australian product called Timbermate. It's great. You can saw it, cut it, drill it. Uh, it doesn't crack, doesn't shrink. That's a walnut one I use, but for the, the uh, repair here, I'll use a white one. So I'll we'll just go around the, where the binding is. Including the white fella. As I said, this won't shrink. And uh, it will stabilize the um, what's left in there. I guess you call it binding or trim. It will stabilize it. What you can also do with this is uh, use it for a patch and do it, uh, go over it with super glue and uh, turn it into a rock. It's really brilliant. This. The other side. What I'll do when I finish this is while it dries, it doesn't take long, about 20 minutes, sand it off, then I'll go over the whole lot with walnut sanding sewer. You could use white, but I've got walnuts, so I'll use it. And uh, that not only seals the grain, but it gives a good base for the uh, finishing coats. From there I'll put on a couple of coats of lacquer, just to seal it. If you don't, if you don't start with a couple of coats of lacquer, just put on the bare timber. You've reached the point of no return. If you mess up, you can't go back. Uh, if you put the lacquer down first, then you're, uh, you, you've got a base that you can sand down to. Looks good. No repairs need doing. No, we should do the scratch there. Okay, so that'll leave me for the moment. I'll leave that to dry and come back. Before we go too much further on the polishing, I'll just repair this head. In theory, I'd uh, I pull that off and, and uh, sand it down. But there's no real need to, I found over the years with these, that uh, with the dry uh, hide glue, the super glue seems to um, stick to it pretty well. So I'll just put a generous amount of super glue on. <coughs> Pardon me. Doesn't matter if you get super glue everywhere, as long as you don't get it on your hands. It just sands off. And only put it on one side, just make sure I put plenty on one side. I don't tape the side there, a lot of people will say tape the side, stop it coming out. But it will bleed out under the tape, so I don't worry about it. Once I finish this, I'll come back and I'll put some more on the uh, on the outside. For a moment, we'll just get this in place. And we go. If there's a gap in the middle, I suppose I could put a clamp in the middle, but I won't bother. If there's a gap in the middle, you just fill it up with um, super glue and every dust. Sure, I'll put 
closed it all up. Close most of the excess there. And I'll clamp it together just for a little while, just for a short time, just to close the, the gap. It's drying. We'll get on to the sanding. That's all dry. I'll just, just use the uh, sander I was using before. That uh, that pad now has had it. So. Very, very well. I was very impressed with it. Another 120. Not 120, 240. Hmm. This 120. Yeah, this 120 it is. Okay. Here's the texture. And off we go. there we go to putting on some uh, grain filler. I used to use sanding sealer, uh, sometimes I'll use shellac uh, to do this but um, this is just as easy. So I just put on a couple of blobs down a bit. Just work it in. You can thin it down first if you wanted to but too easy. Two finger effort. Well, wow. this timber mate is great stuff. before to fix the bindings a bit thick. In case you're wondering what I've got on my bench, I use multiple sheets of witch's paper. So when my bench gets dirty, I just peel off the dirty layers and I've got clean layers underneath. It sands off, you just saw it. So, this is going white. What a mess! This is this is like a, a small child in um, preschool, kindergarten, having fun with mud. Huh. Right. Now, I've got a crack at these. I'll 
quickly sand that off. Mud. A little water container that I use for my wood sanding. Oh, I'm having fun. If there's any gaps there, I just fill them. restorations I've done but it would probably be in the thousands. I didn't plan to get into restoring these, it just happened. My uh, specialty repairs uh, guitar repairs that no one else wants to touch. Would you like a challenge? Or restoring um, vintage um, banjos. Sometimes with these, the uh, fretboard uh, shrinks and the frets stick out the side. This is a bit sharp. Stick out the side and uh, they're like a saw. You know, I've made up a, a file and a piece of timber at the right angle to address that. And if I think of it, I'll put in the video later. But if not, it'll be in another one of my videos. They haven't come out yet, so. Make sure you sub subscribe so you can get all my videos when they come out. There's a bit of a gap there. This, this is good enough to fill gaps. It's like a, it's like a bog, like a, uh, an automotive bog. It's filling capabilities. You can fill cracks like that. Just fill them up with this. Goodness God, pretty to watch. Not really. So there's a little up there, up there, there's the edges. Yeah, it'll me. Yeah, what a mess. And the bench, so. Get that right. Back. Our next move is to um, put a little dot looking where it was. These can be a little bit fiddly. Uh, I like to put them in dry first, then see the glue around them. If you put super glue on first and they don't go on straight, you're a bit stuck. Using a screwdriver puts a nice little tapered hole. Um, it saves it going in too deep. It's almost perfect, I think. Just like that. It's oh, perfect. Then we just go around with a bit of super duper glue. And let it wick in. That's the new one. And when it's dry, we have the 
top two. Sell it. And let's try you regular sand down. And job's done. Now, <laughs> these are a bit hard to handle uh, when you're trying to spray them. So what I do is I get this bolty thing. Do one of the screw holes. And make a handle. easy to play with. I also like using this, what we call in Australia, a lazy Susan. Other countries will have a different name for it. Just to move food around on the table. And uh, using that, you can get around all sides of the job you're doing. Now, very important uh, Part of this is to make sure you use wax and grease remover. If you don't, you'll get all sorts of nasty things happen with the paint. If you find anything particularly stubborn to get off, uh, try using petrol. Give it a good uh, wipe down with petrol. And that normally does the job. If you get hit with that. You would think that by sanding it right down, you'd get rid of all the wax and grease, but it's not the case. Particularly if someone's used a silicon polish on it, silicon is very hard to figure out. So, we've got uh, not quite dry enough. I might come back when that's a little drier. Now, I'll use this to obviously to spray it. If you want to get the side, the bottom of the sides, I just got a paper towel and stick it on the top. You can't see very good in the camera there, but I can. Uh, or you can stick anything under there. You can get a can of paint or anything just to lift it up a little bit, just so you can get the bottom of the sides. 